front of them. So just go with the percentages and try not to wind up. Okay. <coughs> just keep smiling so you can't. <laughs> Be happy. Yay, great. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering, I thought, man, I've got a busy night ahead. Yeah, this is. Two minutes. We do have some Boy Scouts here. Uh, this is for a badge, I'm sure, right? You want to come down and introduce yourself? Tell us what your pack is and uh, your names, what you're working on. And we've got a trinket for you. Let's go over here to the uh, podium. Is this a whole troop? Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm calling to order the uh, Farragut Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting for September 20, isn't it the 3rd, 23rd? The third. This is the 25th. Does that mean we got to come back in two days no. or what? This is the last one. Here, here we are. All right. We'll start by rising for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. First item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Anybody have any suggestions for changes or shall we adopt it as is? I'll move for approval. Second. Mayor. All in favor? Mayor, I'm Aye. sorry. I, I just oh, wanted to jump in. I apologize. Uh, yeah. I, I apologize. Mayor, if we could delete item 6A2 uh, from your agenda, that's ordinance 14-19. Um, we'd still need a little work to do on that and uh, hopefully we can get that back to you at the next meeting. All right. I'll revise my motion to uh, approve the, the agenda with that uh, deletion of item uh, 
6A2. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next item is uh, mayor's report and I've been out of town. Uh, I don't have anything uh, to report tonight, but if anybody else does, uh, take the stage. <coughs> if not, it's time for Citizens Forum. Our first speaker tonight is Liston Matthews. We need you to go to the podium, what you're doing, and give us your name and address. My name is Liston Matthews. Mr. Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, <coughs> gentlemen, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I come to uh, uh, petition you to remove the ban on handgun carry in uh, the parks and greenways of Farragut. The Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights set forth the foundational ideals for the United States of America. Those documents created a government that would be responsive to the people with majority rule and the preservation of individual rights. The Declaration of Independence recognized the self-evident truth that all people are, are endowed by our Creator with the right to life, <clears throat> liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Without the first of those, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness are meaningless words. And without the means to preserve life, the whole declaration is just an empty promise. But the Second Amendment of the Bill of Rights, by recognizing <coughs> excuse me, and guaranteeing the means to preserve life, gives teeth to the declaration's words. A mama dog will bear her fangs at any threat to her pups, and she will use those fangs as necessary to defend herself or those pups. She does not ask permission of any legislature or board. She understands the natural right of self-preservation. You and I were also endowed with the natural right of self-preservation. But rather than fangs, we got brains and technology to provide us with the personal firearm with which to respond to evil human predators. Recent court cases drawing from the Supreme Court Heller case have held that the federal government cannot arbitrarily deny <clears throat> the right to have defensive handguns in non-sensitive open spaces. The McDonald case held that state and governments, local governments must honor the same rights as the federal government. The Tennessee Constitution authorizes the state legislature to regulate the wearing of arms with, a, I quote, a view to prevent crime. The Farragut Parks and Greenways ban can't be shown to reduce crime and goes far beyond regulation to outright prohibition. That prohibition is not offset by any meaningful security. An employee driving through the park from time to time just doesn't cut it. Like the apparent radical Islamic terrorists that attacked in Canada yesterday, rapists and muggers don't set appointments ahead of time. They choose the time, they choose the place, they choose the victim. So I'm calling on you to remove this ban and allow for the right of personal defense in the parks and greenways. I thank you for your time, and I t if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Thank you. Our second speaker is Doug Dutton. And uh, a couple of rules. We limit this to five minutes, and uh, if you're going to repeat uh, mm -hmm. something uh, that somebody else has said, then you might consider not saying it again. <laughs> All right. I'm Doug Dutton. I live at 12031 South Fox Den Drive. We, I know that all of you except Mr. Pinchock were involved in this issue at a previous time and uh, voted to, uh, to retain the ban on guns in parks. I want to review a little bit of the information we presented at that time and the, and the one that I think is most important is 0.04% of the handgun carry permit holders in Tennessee have lost their permits because of criminal activity. That shows that we are the most certified law-abiding citizens you'll ever run into. And we're the only people that your ban 
applies to. It, it doesn't stop the criminals or the bad guys. It just stops the good guys from being armed. After the last election, I had some communication with the mayor about this attorney general's opinion, number 09-129, and I think uh, that opinion was misunderstood or misrepresented by someone as to its meaning. It was stated that that opinion meant that the town couldn't allow guns in parks, so you'd be responsible if something happened at a school activity. That opinion does not state that. It states that we as the permit holder are responsible to know whether or not there's a school activity occurring, and if so, we are responsible, not the city. I think if you'll ask Mr. Hale, he will agree with that interpretation of that Attorney General's opinion. The responsibility is on us. Secondly, uh, this, this week a report came out that showed that 92% 90, of mass killings in this country, which we keep reading about in the press and it's always blown up, 92% of those mass shootings occur in gun-free zones. They all violate the law of some sort. Uh, it's against the law to have guns where these mass shootings occur. It's against the law often for the felons to have guns, which is the law. So you're, you're just inviting problems by doing this. I will remind you that Knox County at the time this became optional with municipalities and, and governmental agencies, Knox County agree, uh, voted to, to allow guns in parks. Have you heard of any problems with guns in parks in Knox County in the last, I guess it's four years now? No, you haven't, nor anywhere else in the state of Tennessee. Uh, how about the Smoky Mountains Park? Do you know that you're allowed to carry your weapon in the Smoky Mountain and all national parks now in compliance with state laws? Have you heard of any problems with handgun carry permit holders in the national parks? No, you haven't. Uh, all Tennessee state parks, you're allowed to carry your weapon in all Tennessee state parks. Have you heard of any problems with handgun carry permit holders in state parks? No, you haven't. If we were meeting in Loudoun County tonight, the Loudoun County Commission, when, it's, when it meets, it now allows handgun carry permit holders to carry their weapons into the meetings. And there's always the, the exaggerated emotional scare tactics of, oh, it'll be a gunfight at the OK Corral. <laughs> it never happens. It never happens. So we ask you to consider placing this back on the your agenda for further discussion and action and to consider the facts of the case and not the emotions of the issue. Thank you. Thank you. Our third speaker is Mike Tis Tisdale. Mike Tisdale, 112 Confederacy Circle, Farragut. I speak from the standpoint of carrying a weapon for self-defense my wife is in electric wheelchair. She's, she cannot run from a threat. Therefore, I feel safer carrying in a park when we're walking in the event something happens. Criminals don't obey your ban. They laugh at you and carry anyway. And you read countless stories, too, of a carry permit holder, a good guy, stopping a bad guy a lot of times. Bad guys have their intent on mass killings have committed suicide when confronted by a handgun carry person. So that's all I have to say. For my wife's disability, I feel responsible to defend her. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is George Caldwell. Mr. Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor and gentlemen, uh, I'm George Caldwell. I didn't come with a prepared speech. I come for a different purpose. Speak from the heart. I'm a retired federal officer, retired uh, police commissioner in Tennessee. So I know a little bit about how the game works for those of us who are licensed to carry a firearm. The parks are one of the places in the United States where these predators prey on the children, the wives, 
Maybe one of your wives might be in the park and get attacked. One of the great things about the folks who have a license to carry a gun, they've been checked out, they've been trained, and they're good citizens. Or short of that, they can't get a permit. I consider it an honor that those folks who are in that capacity are out here to help law enforcement. You'll notice in all the news when the police have a problem, who do they call on? The people. If you can help us, if you know something, call us because there's not enough of them to do the job that we would like to have done. There's just not enough. Hardly any here except for the county, county sheriff's department, who do a wonderful job. But if we permit our people that are licensed to carry a gun to enter the parks, Hoodlums, rapists, murderers, they don't prey on the park where they feel like there's people there who are armed who could take action against them. You know, the banks have guards, armed guards, uniformed, and they're not there to catch bank robbers. They're there to prevent it, prevent robberies. And that applies in so many other places today because there are so many of these hoodlums, robbers, rapists that are out there today, people addicted to narcotics, they prey on people. They have to, to buy the drugs. So I speak for those people who would like to see it change where they could take their gun with them to the park to give us some additional protection for our families and our children when they go visit the parks to try to enjoy the life. It will happen. Bet on it. Bad things happen every day. Let us pray that it doesn't happen here. But the sad part about it is it will. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Now up to the approval of minutes from October 9th. I think we, we need to make a change in the date. Did you catch that already? <laughs> okay. What? The, the date in the minutes is wrong. Should be October 9th. Yeah. Yeah. So with that change, I'll uh, make a motion to approve. A second. I will abstain, abstain because I was not at that meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, next item is ordinances. Uh, we have one. Uh, and this is first reading ordinance 14 16, ordinance amending, amending the Farragut zoning ordinance uh, 86 16 as amended is hereby amended by rezoning parcel 109 tax map 130 located at 820 North Campbell Station Road north of the Holiday Inn Express approximately 33 acres from R2 general sing uh, general single family residential district to R6 multifamily residential district and OSMFR open space multifamily residential overlay district uh, PNG PMG is the applicant yes sir thank you um, as you stated the current property is currently zoned R2 general single-family residential um, due to the recent recent text amendments to the R6 and the creation of the OSMFR overlay district um, the applicant has now come forth to rezone um, the property just north of the Holiday Inn <clears throat> for a proposed multifamily development. Um, based on the comprehensive land use plan, the majority of the property at 820 North Campbell Station um, Road has been designated on the future land use map <clears throat> um, for open space cluster residential. And at the um, Planning Commission meeting on, on October 16th, 
um, the commission did approve a minor amendment to the CLUP to incorporate the OSMFR into that open space cluster residential area. Um, as with any um, zoning map amendment, um, staff must always refer to the comprehensive land use plan and the strategic plan when evaluating these type of requests. Um, the comprehensive land use plan, um, the character of the typical open space um, cluster development would consist of small lots, detached units, and now provides for multifamily. Um, units in a cluster setting with substantial open space and with this OSMFR 50% of the entire property would be set aside for open space. <coughs> Staff feels as though that this request is consistent with the strategic plan and the comprehensive land use plan by providing for a greater housing choice. Um, also strengthening the local economy as provided for in goal two um, of the strategic plan. Ordinance 1416 will also promote goal, goal four, objectives four and five of the strategic plan by providing for appropriate land uses for future development. The Planning Commission at the October 16th meeting did um, request a traffic impact study as it relates to this development. Um, due to the fact that it's substantially increasing densities within the area, as noted in the executive summary, um, the primary conclusion of the traffic impact study is that it will not that this development will not result in unacceptable levels of service to North Campbell Station um, and the studied intersections. Um, there were three recommendations set forth in that traffic impact study, and um, staff would support those and will evaluate those at the time of the site plan. Um, Again, at their meeting on October 16th, um, the Planning Commission did recommend unanimously approval um, as re is reflected in Ordinance 1416. Subsequently, um, staff would recommend approval of Ordinance um, 1416 on first reading for the subject property um, from R2 to R6 and OSMFR. And I'll be happy to an answer any questions you may have. I have a couple questions. Sure. Uh, first of all, how many uh, units is the uh, applicant proposing? They're proposing 200, 252 units. And the second question I have is uh, the traffic impact study. There's an executive summary. Is that part of public uh, record? Yes, sir. And it is actually posted on the website, um, the executive summary under the Planning Commission's October packet. For the sake of everybody here, why not uh, just briefly describe what that uh, traffic study is? Absolutely. Um, the three recommendations that are set forth in there, um, as, as they, Cannon and Cannon evaluated and, and conducted this traffic impact study for this subject property. The three recommendations that were set forward, um, the first being um, the apartment um, driveway site should be a stop controlled. Um, this will ensure um, adequate site distances for that project. The second, um, <coughs> excuse me, would provide a deceleration lane on the north, coming into the north part of the property, um, which has been standard practice for the town for some time. And then um, the third recommendation is op optimizing the traffic signals. Um, there at the intersection with I-40 and Snyder Road, which we currently have a project to evaluate all the traffic signals within the town. So this would tie into that evaluation also. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'll move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. So we move to uh, business items. First is approval of a contract 2015-08 street resurfacing of Andover Boulevard. Um. Thank you, Mayor. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll take this one tonight. Um, sure. the, uh, the town issued bids for the resurfacing of, all, of many of our roads here in town earlier this year in March. Uh, we gave that bid to Rogers Group, and Rogers Group uh, went through and resurfaced all of the roads that we asked them to resurface in the town. The last road that they were working on was Brighton Court in the Andover subdivision, and unfortunately, that when they left that road, there was a tremendous amount of tack 
that they um, drew not only onto Andover Boulevard but also onto Smith Road and Grigsby Chapel Road and, and continuing on. Um, the issues with Andover Boulevard are, 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 are considerable and so we have been talking to them for the last several weeks on trying to come up with some kind of solution to uh, solve the, the issues of the damages that they have uh, occurred out there. Unfortunately, at this point, we have not been able to come up to some conclusion, and we're getting close to the end of the asphalt uh, season when we can actually, uh, the plant start shutting down and we couldn't fix this uh, issue before uh, the end of the asphalt season. Uh, a, good, a good time to actually resurface these roads. So we've gone back to the second low bidder from that March bid letting, uh, which is Greenback Asphalt, and they are willing to continue to do the work for the unit prices that were in that uh, contract based on an index that actually rises and falls depending on the gas the gas prices so the overall cost that uh, we're looking at to repair all of Andover Boulevard by resurfacing it in a small little section on uh, Smith Road is approximately fifty nine thousand one hundred and twenty one dollars and thirty cents um, just as of today, I received a note from Rogers Group asking to uh, continue some talks on this subject to try to see if we couldn't reach some kind of conclusion. So what I'd like to be able to do is offer an amended motion to what you have before you now, which is, if I, if I can read it into the record, and uh, if the board's willing to accept this, certainly we can have a good discussion about this, is approval of bids and award of contract 2015-08 to Greenback Asphalt company for their unit prices bid on March 18th, 2014, with an estimated total cost of $59,121.30, subject to cancellation if we are able to finalize an acceptable alternative agreement with Rogers Group to repair Andover Boulevard. What this would do is give us a little bit of time to work with Rogers Group to see if we can come up with some kind of agreement, and if we can't, then we can certainly go right to Greenback Asphalt and get them to finish the job before the end of the season's over. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm perfectly fine with your amended motion, but I'd, I'd like to tweak it just a little bit. I'd like to put an end date on it. Okay. And then I'll need some guidance as to what that end date should be. I don't know if it needs, that this is me being perhaps a little, uh, a little too harsh, but you know, I'd like to say if we can't have it worked out by Rogers Group by next Friday, Maybe that's unreasonable. I don't know where the discussions are um, to the detail that you do, so I need some guidance here. The second thing is it certainly shouldn't go beyond what this uh, asphalt season would be. You know, we need to make sure we, we don't slip past that window inadvertently. So I, I just like to have a, an end date where we say, if we don't have it resolved by this, we go forward. Is there a, a date that's reasonable? We're probably going to have to if we can reach some sort of <coughs> understanding or we have an offer that we would recommend to you, we'd probably have to come back here anyway before we could. So what if we said the next meeting of this body? I, I, I would be, that's Was acceptable. That, Was that yeah, too late? Well, Daryl, what do you think about the timing on that? Um, well, that, that's certainly doable. I'm, d I'm just thinking with the contract that we normally have in place, the contract that is in place right now, uh, it's based on unit prices. I'm not sure, and I'll, I'll certainly defer to Tom on this. Uh, would, would it need to come back before this body for approval? Uh, I mean, we... No, the only thing that needs to come back here is if we, have, if we reach an agreement to compromise some dispute with... Rogers group it's that agreement that needs to be brought back here I think okay yeah yeah I mean because we were we would be agreeing to do something different than what our agreement with them is at this point and I think we would need this body to bless that if it was a compromise of some kind Daryl the only question I would have is that if we had to wait until November the 13th which is our next board meeting then would that be enough time Ooh. <laughs> for the other contractor to finish that repaving work before the end of the season? The, mm -hmm. the contract that we have before the board tonight has a December 5th completion date. 
that's with the understanding that we would expedite all the paperwork going back and forth. Um, is that greenback or? Uh, uh, with greenback. Okay. What uh, happens if it rains every day? Well, hopefully nothing. When did the asphalt plants shut down? Typically by the, about the 15th or so. Of December? December. That's correct. Uh, November 13th, and, and, and David Sparks is with me here tonight. Uh, David, what's your thought on? Uh, that in the schedule. That in the schedule that they've got before them already. Um, well, and my, I want to make it clear. My suggestion is is not to to impede anything from happening, but rather. I think uh, in general there's been disappointment with the response we've received from Rogers Group. I mean, they seem to have drugged something out that, from, from my viewpoint, is very simple to resolve, and they just seems to be the gift that keeps on giving here. And with this window of time coming to a close, I, I think we need to have a date in there, but if the date is going to keep us from getting this, I don't want to make the situation worse by putting a date in there. The intent was to try to get it done. So. Alderman, I think that uh, we'll know fairly quickly whether or not they're willing to to work with us on, on this issue. Okay. Um, one thing we could do is put November 6th as a deadline, which is two weeks from today. It may require a special called meeting of this body if we have a majority that can be here for that in case we can come up with some kind of compromise. Um, but if, you, if you're comfortable with that. When was this section of road scheduled to be repaved it's not in our <coughs> current sections to be repaved Pro but probably Daryl what three years maybe four. probably three three to four years or so yep. <coughs> it, do, do you I'll, I'll ask you this do you believe putting a date in there is going to be a hindrance to getting this resolved because it, if it is I'm, I'll just leave it out and we'll go with them all you don't believe no so? yeah okay. I think it's fine okay then then I'm going to uh, take your motion and add the wording that we want it resolved by November 6th. That's fine, yeah. If, if there's uh, no other discussion, I'll make that a formal motion. So we're accelerating our paving schedule. We're not getting any benefit from it. We're losing three years of use of this. We're paying extra because they messed up. Correct. Well, we're what we have done is deduct this amount from the check that we paid them to pay for the damages that that have occurred okay so we're giving them the opportunity to go ahead and do it to collect their balance or we, we pay their balance to somebody else. and again I haven't heard an alternative that they've come back to us with yet that I know this board would be agreeable to so that's what we're still waiting on is to see if we can come up with that and that's what I think the two weeks will give us is to see if we can do that. That still gives us enough time to go ahead and work with the other contractor if we need to to get it done by December 5th or before the asphalt plants close for the year. David, going back to what you proposed originally, does that allow you to make that decision yourself as a staff member if we get a proposal from Rogers group? I think if, if we get any proposal from Rogers Group that is something that I felt like would, would need to come to the board for your consideration, we can do that before November 6th. We can have a special call meeting before then if we could get, you know, a quorum of the board here to, to hear that issue. So, um, but certainly if we get the same, the same discussion that we've had, then I'd say that, that there's really not much else for, to bring before the board at this time. I'm just trying to figure a way to expedite this. Sure. I think obviously if they, if Rogers Group is willing to repave Andover Boulevard at no cost, that's no, that's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. But I doubt that's going to be what they're going to propose. That's why my thought is 
whatever they propose, we're probably going to have to come back to this body because David and I both know how this body feels about it. Well, and, and, and the, the bad part is we're just at a time of year where the window to get these decisions done is just tight. Right? Yeah. And if we screw around for another two, three weeks, it's what, what the spring. mayor said could happen, and then we're sitting here for four, five, six months until we can go back after it again. And isn't that the area where the fella came and complained about it? That right. Yeah, it is. Yes, ma'am. Then I think we should try to make it happen as quickly as possible. Well, right now we got a ch we got our check back in the mail for the entire project. So it came back. They gave it back to us Is because we deducted this amount. Yeah. So right now we're holding the entire contract price. Four hundred. What is it? Thirty-nine thousand. Four hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars. Just sign that check. <laughs> so, you know. I didn't sign it. Is this an arbitration contract or is it a, uh, does, does our it, contract call for arbitration? It allows, it allows for arbitration if both parties agree to it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it, the contract suggests it goes to court. It looks to me like this is purely an aesthetic issue. It's not a question of safety or uh, a hazard in any way. In fact, they actually put down extra material on uh, this section of road. Uh, and people may not like the way it looks, but they haven't damaged it except aesthetically. Um, I know everybody would like to have it go away immediately, but th this may be something that needs to be submitted to arbitration. It's kind of a, it's kind of a big deal. Well, we're hoping we're going to be able to talk it through and get to some place that would be reasonable. Um, I mean, that you, you're hitting right on the issue. Is it a? It, did it? Did it do damage? And I guess if you live in that subdivision and you look out your window and you see all these black stripes up and down the street, maybe you think it did damage it. And under the Tennessee uh, T dot specs, they're supposed to repair damaged property that results from their work, and that's sort of the issue: is this damaged property? And you know, we've we're trying to you know recognize that there's always going to be a little bit of tack. I mean, we we've seen that, but we've never seen anything quite like what we have here. And so something was done differently than what had been done before. I mean, we've never, I've been town attorney for 18 years. I've never heard anybody complain about TAC until this year for yeah. the first time. And I went out and looked at it, and it's pretty amazing to me. Yeah, there's, there's uh, quite a bit of so additional material on the street. There's <coughs> a lot more asphalt on that asphalt road than there was to start with. Um, so it looks like if we're getting it paved three years earlier, we'd be paying to pave it if they would give us some kind of proration on that to lost three years of service on our uh, on our road and and pave it for a price within this reason allowing for that then that would be a reasonable and equitable solution to demand that they go out and just repave it out of their pocket I think is uh, may not be reasonable and again, that's the kind of discussions we're going to try to have uh, in, in quick order with them to see what they may be willing to do. But again, all the discussions prior to this have not been really willing to do anything uh, yeah. with the issue. Well, that's unacceptable, so. obviously. Well, obviously, if they've sent the check back, then they're, they're, they may want to have a lawsuit against us or something. Yeah, it sounds like they're getting ready to fight. I think we have to we have to maintain a reasonable position. Uh, so I don't know what the solution is to to speed that up. Um, these things have a way of grinding, and know there's people who would like to see it wave a magic wand and have it go away, but uh, I don't know if that's reasonable or possible either. I, I fully expect that both sides are going to have to compromise their best day. Or else it's not going to get, it's not going to be resolvable. I mean, 
So I, I would anticipate that there, that's why we think we may need to come back to this body to be authorized to work out. Accept an offer of some yeah. kind. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, <clears throat> I, I think we probably all need to recognize that this may not be paved this paving season. May not get resolved that quickly. I don't know if there's any way to, I don't know if there's any way to force it to happen. Well, with, with the motion we have at hand that I've made, it, it, that would happen. You know, I, I guess my frustration here is it, it, it's amazing to me how a company would do a job. Now, to speak for me personally, if this was my company, I'd be embarrassed to have my name on that. And they've been, I could use a different term, but they've been screwing around with this for months. And it, to, the lack of communication, the lack of conversation, the lack of negotiating to talk about fixing what is nothing less than a mess is ridiculous and and they they have put us in this position they have been doing a certain amount of gamemanship and this window is closing which for their benefit extends out the opportunity for them to sit and screw around with this even longer if, if we don't finally put a little bit of teeth in it where we say hold it we're going to go forward with this this thing's we're going to be sitting on this for another four five six months it's, it's just ridiculous i mean I, I'm, I mean, Rogers Group is a, a long-term quality organization. I just can't even believe that we're even still screwing around with this. It's ridiculous. So the, the, back to your comment, which I don't necessarily disagree with, but we do, we've got a motion and uh, that I believe would force some leverage here. You know, they've got to step up or in two weeks we're going forward. Yeah, the way I interpret your motion is if we don't have some something that we recommend that you approve by November the 6th, <coughs> we have a contract that exactly. we're going to let to Greenback to, to right. do the repair, and then we sort out, we either litigate about it or we sort it we out after right. the fact, but it'll right. be fixed this season. That is exactly the intent right. of, of my motion. And I'll second it if we're ready. Is there any more discussion or question in that case uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. aye 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 any opposed um, next is <clears throat> approval of engineering services contract for the Kingston Pike Greenway project old stage road to <coughs> Bircher Road Yes, we've been talking about this project for some time. This is uh, uh, one of the chief links in our pedestrian circulation plan. Uh, it is pedestrian facilities. It's intended to link between Virtue Road and Old Stage Road on the south side of Kingston Pike across the Willow Creek Golf Course frontage. Uh, it will link up all of the pedestrian facilities in the southwest quadrant of the town with those of uh, just about everything else. Uh, you'll recall that back in March, you, you approved a contract, a proposal from Cannon and Cannon for creation of a concept plan to uh, uh, basically to determine the impact to the golf course, uh, to allow the golf course uh, a, a lot of input we wanted to make sure that whatever we construct out there uh, does not impact the golf course too heavily and uh, uh, that has been done one of the the other main reasons for that concept plan is uh, just to de determine the impact so that the environmental approvals can move forward so uh, that concept plan has been created it was uh, workshop to the board uh, last month and I believe it's uh, it's my feeling that the golf course is, they are generally in favor of the concept that has been approved uh, it is essentially a five-foot sidewalk concrete sidewalk across their frontage that would be constructed just beyond just outside of the existing utility poles along the frontage uh, along with a long retaining wall to uh, to protect that that hole hole 12 on Willow Creek uh, the golf course 
they feel that uh, this is probably the best concept that, that we could have come up with. They still have some concerns, and we'll be working with them in the future <coughs> on this. But uh, before you deny it is a, a, a second proposal from Cannon and Cannon. Uh, it is for completion of the environmental phase for the project, as well as, as uh, uh, completion of, of final construction plans. Uh, it has a lump sum fee of $114,700. Uh, we've looked over this. We're happy with the scope that has been provided by Cannon and Cannon. So staff recommends approval of this of this proposal. I will say that Harold Cannon and Becky Bottoms are here tonight with Cannon and Cannon, uh, or from Cannon and Cannon. If, uh, if you have any questions for them, you're welcome to uh, fire away. <laughs> oh, well, not far away. <laughs> that may be inappropriate considering the you know, I'll, I'll hush and it is <laughs> I'll move for approval I'll second all in favor say aye 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 any opposed brings us to town administrators report thank you mayor um, you may recall from our last meeting we had a couple of different items regarding the closing of some property for right-of-way acquisition along Everett Road I've got another proposal for you tonight which actually is a step two to the uh, Quinn property that you approved last meeting. Uh, it's before you, there was an $80,000 tract of land, uh, the Quinn property on, um, on Ever Road. At the last meeting, you approved a contract worth $15,489 to purchase the right of way uh, from the mortgage holder, the bank. Um, this closing would actually entail the, the monies going to the Quinns themselves in the amount of $64,510.98. Again, since this is over $10,000, uh, we're asking that the board um, formally uh, approve that, uh, that closing so that we can go ahead and get that, uh, get that taken care of. What's the dimensions on that that makes it so high? We talked about this a little bit last time. This one, th this is a fairly large relatively speaking a fairly large piece of property that we're taking but the thing that makes it different from all the others is that the way the area that we're taking gets pretty close to the house so there's a damage calculation that the appraiser came up with or damage to what's called the remainder if you take property from somebody and you impact the value of what they have left after you've taken what you're taking, then there's an, an amount that is assigned that they, they're entitled to receive. And in this case, my recollection is it was about the appraiser came up with, a, I think it was $12,600 for damage to the remainder. And then if you look at the construction plans, this is I guess we're taking this is the largest take in the whole project as I recall I believe that's correct it takes it's a it's a long stretch of Everett Road and we're taking a, a long stretch or a long narrow piece until you get up to where the house is and then it balloons out and we because of the lay of the land we have to take a bigger piece but this is a, this contract for the amount was agreed to actually in 2009 that's when the eighty thousand dollars was was contracted for for this particular one and if you remember last meeting of that eighty thousand dollars their more their mortgage company was unwilling to give us a release unless they received eighty thousand dollars of what the Quins were going to re I mean fifteen thousand dollars of what the Quins were going to receive so the so the and that's not unusual the mortgage holders frequently if their collateral is being affected by a taking they usually will not release uh, the property without taking a portion of what is being paid but, but essentially what we've got is the appraised value of the property that's being taken is what's being paid 
And and it comes right up to the house? Not right up to the house, but it comes close enough to the house that it impacts in the opinion of the appraiser that appraised this, that it impacted the value of the remainder. I'd like to see that on a, on a plot or something that, that shows it or reveals why we have to get so close to the house. Well, the engineers came up with the plans. Well, I'm, I'm just curious, what, what does it look like? Well, in, indirectly, ha we, we, we've already uh, approved this. We're just approving a second part of the, the payment, correct? Well, I'm, I'm not correct. I'm not suggesting that we don't. No, I, I know that. I just, I just I'm point just of clarity. Curious. Yeah. We had a diagram here last at our last meeting. You guys pass that down. Yeah, come here. So, David, do you, do you need this? Is something an item we need to vote on tonight? Is that? It would be good if you would. Yes, sir. It's uh, it's it's finalizing again because the purchase is over ten thousand dollars. It's just basically um, finalizing that agreement uh, that the first half we did last meeting. Okay. Now this is the final half this meeting. I'll Ac make a Actually, what you're doing is the agreement's already been entered into. It was entered into in two thousand nine. We're just approving the. Plan. All you're pr approving is the uh, you're given the the town recorder the authority to cause a $64,000 check to be written and uh, that's that's it that's the issue because we're having to write a big such a big check Where's the house? There you go. there's your yeah Marin board this uh, this picture is actually from our last meeting and it shows as Tom was talking about how close the house gets um, to the roadway there toward the northern part of that property. Didn't you say we uh, ran into the same situation um, on Old or no McPhee Road, right there off Old Stage? Or didn't you tell me yes. the previous? Yes, McPhee. We had three houses along McPhee Road when we widened McPhee uh, quite a number of years ago, where <clears throat> the road once it was widened was really got pretty close to the house in it in it those first three houses on the right as you turn on to mcphee road off of old stage they all had fairly large uh damage calculations to the remainder and it's you know in today's world we operate almost entirely on appraisals in the old days you could you could negotiate a little bit and but in today's world the the state requires you have appraisals and pretty much we get once the appraisals done we're that's what we've got to pay under state law so what 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 you need is a motion to allow the town recorder to make this payment that's what i've heard that's it and that's the motion i'm making and then i'll second it all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed Thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple other items that we've got uh, going on this uh, the next few days. One is tomorrow night is Freaky Friday, Fright Night at Mayor Bob Leonard Park from 5 to 7. Kids are going to be out in their Halloween costumes getting a lot of candy and goodies and staying up all night on sugar. So we uh, look forward <laughs> to having everybody come out to that tomorrow night. It's a great event. It's going to have some great weather, too. And hopefully uh, some of you all can make it if, out there if you can. Also on next Tuesday, October 28th at 6 p.m., uh, we have the architectural design standards public hearing going on here at uh, in the boardroom and we encourage any business owner or resident of the town that's interested in that to come and and be a part of that discussion again that's a, a draft uh, concepts of our architectural design standards and we're looking for public input on those on those draft policies you can go on our town website a little uh, little cumbersome to get through it but you go to the town website and go under departments, community development, and then planning, and then you'll find architectural design guidelines, or you can just hit the search bar and, and type in architectural and get it that way. So uh, that's all I have to report tonight. Uh, could I mention something? Uh, the fact that we had the people here that want to lift the band about the guns in park, could we put that later on our agenda, on an uh, agenda in the coming months to reconsider that? I think that's up to the board if y'all would like to make a motion to do that that's certainly up to y'all to to make that call 
Well, I think we absolutely need to, and uh, I would make that motion that we uh, put that on the agenda for uh, for a true discussion. <laughs> that we have a true discussion and consider the facts and put aside our individual prejudices. And I think if the town cannot demonstrate a clear benefit to this community in uh, in curtailing the the rights of the most law-abiding segment of our society demonstrably, then, then we need to lift that ban. So we need to have that discussion. Then I'll second that motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Aye. I say no. So do I. No. All right. Alderman Honkin. No. Alderman LaMarche? Yes. Alderman Markley? Yes. Alderman Pinchock? No. Mayor McGill? No. Oh. I'm sorry, Mayor. That's all I had to report. Uh, town Attorney's report. No report tonight. All right. In that case, we are adjourned. Thank mm -hmm. you.